Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. From St. Louis Public Radio. This is St. Louis on the Air. I don't want young baby bands or bands that are on the come up to feel burned out, feeling like I don't know the right people. We're a blues city. We're a jazz city. You know, we're the home of Chuck Berry. And these things are important. Like, that's our history. Mm -hmm. But how do we make new history? So we have to be able to embrace younger artists. It creates a situation where people can be seen. The real thing about St. Louis is the potential is there. We just got to fill in the holes, you know. And I believe in my city, and I don't say that blindly. What I'm trying to get people in St. Louis to realize is that while you're willing to go to another city and spend seven, eight hundred dollars on nightlife, you have everything you need here to create the same scenario. You just have to lean in. I'm Rod Milam. This Saturday at Off-Broadway, the inaugural Fuchsia Fest will take place. It's led by Larry Morse, who you might know from the band Ilphonics, and Fuchsia Fest plans to give stage to live hip-hop bands from St. Louis and around the Midwest. And in addition to his group, Ilphonics, the lineup is going to include hip-hop bands Loop Rat, The Domino Effect, The Greater Good, Retro Tramp, Draco, and the Indianapolis-based band Native Son. So I am sitting here today with Larry Morris, who is head of Ilphonics. He is the lead MC, and we're going to talk more about the festival and how it fits in with the St. Louis music scene. Larry, thank you very much for coming on St. Louis on the Air. Thank you for having me. What is Fuchsia Fest, and Mm -hmm. uh, why is it taking place now? So I was really thinking about it over the last few years as Ilphonics. We kind of toured um, around the Midwest, a little bit of the United States, as you might know, and how we just really had a live hip-hop band scene here, and a lot of people just doesn't know it exists. They don't know that we're here. And so over time, I thought more and more about it, and I was like, well, how do we put us in front of people? Because often in the hip-hop genre, everybody thinks hip-hop is all the same. Mm -hmm. They don't see the sub-genres. They don't see the different categories that spin off of the sub-genres. And I was like, well... I think it's important that we figure out ways to create these shows and these spaces so people can come in and see what's really around the corner from them. You know, these acts that are on this ticket, most of them have been playing for quite some time. Mm -hmm. And so, unfortunately, I lost my mom in 2018, and that was the year that I was thinking about doing it, and everything kind of got put on hold because of that. Okay. And so, during the, the pandemic, You know, you get a lot of time to think to yourself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I think I want to do this again. And as we were getting ready to start opening up venues and things were coming back to life, I formed a real strong relationship, still have one with Steve Poldman over at Off-Broadway. And I reached out to him and I was like, look, I kind of got a concept for a show that I want to do that's going to really highlight live hip hop bands. Would you be interested? And he was so about it that it just worked out. And so with that being the case, In February, we announced we were going to do it, Mm -hmm. and we've been just pushing ever since. And I reached out to every act personally and asked them to get on this. I didn't have to go through a bunch of managers and all that. I was able to just reach out to these bands directly and say, hey, this is something we're going to do for St. Louis. Can you be a part of it? So you mentioned that there might have been a difference between, I guess, a hip-hop fusion band and a live hip-hop band. What are the different types of hip hop bands mm-hmm. in general, and then what's going to be represented at the well, yeah. uh, festival? No, that's a good question. Traditionally, when we look at rap and in hip hop with a live band, I think you either see one or two things. You mm-hmm. see the Roots, which they're the kings of it. Like nobody, the Roots is one of the best bands. Period. Mm-hmm. We ain't even just talking about hip hop. But then I think there was a period of time where it was very much this thing of like rock and hip hop. Okay. You know, that's what it was. And when we came along in about 2006, Ilphonics, we were kind of on this cutting edge of how do we fuse rap with things other than just rock and roll? You know, how do we take 
you know, being from University City, the jazz element and put it in there? How do we take that gospel piece, the R&B? So I think now what we've seen over the last few years is there are a lot of rap acts that have live bands. Mm -hmm. You know, they're putting them on stage. So they're no longer just coming with the DJ. They have drummers and instrumentalists playing. But there's always been a group of hip hop bands that have existed that were always just a band, you know. And so I think we're at a point where these bands have been very creative in fusing different subgenres of previous genres that we've mentioned and taking hip hop and doing different things with it. Because, you know, at times I feel like they divide rap into backpack rap and trap rap and trap and street rap and all that other stuff. The cool thing about the live hip hop bands, I feel, is that these groups exist in the spectrum where they are bands. It's not an MC with a band. The MC is an instrument within the band. You see what I'm saying? And when you put that together, you are able to create a sound that's so unique because, like, for example, for us, the bass player can come to me and say, I want the flow to feel like this. Okay. As a a MC, instrumentalist, right, it's my job to figure that out. So I think in St. Louis, we've always had groups that were kind of doing that. Mm -hmm. A couple of them are on this ticket. And I just really want people to know that it can be more than what you just get delivered on the radio and on the TV every single day. So just so that we give the listeners a chance to figure out what bit of difference we're talking about, let's hear something from your group, mm-hmm. Hill Phonics. Here's a cut from 2009. It's called This Is How We Do. Everybody is moving St. Louis. North, South, West, South, West, and South, South, out to the city. That's where I roam. The East Side, Hill Side, North, County, South, County, Mid, County, West, County, Ding, Dang, Dong. On the Mississippi, it's small little city. with your art, you're doing? It's so well known, but you gotta come and visit. It's hard to a picture describing the lyrics of a place called home. Yeah, this is how we do, how we do. Make a move to the beat. This is how we do, how we do. Make a move to the beat. This is how we do, how we do. Make a move to the beat. This is how we do, how we do it. Hey. That is This Is How We Do by Ilphonics from back in 2009. Yeah. So that's kind of the mix that you're talking about. You're, you're the MC. You're clearly rapping over the beat, but the rest of the band is back there playing right. with you. Now, is there anything different than any of the other groups like Draco or Loop Rat is doing than what you guys do? Yeah, I mean, I think everybody imparts their own flavor on it. Like with the greater good and retro, you can definitely tell they have more of that rock influence, but I feel like it's more modern, you know, like... I, it, it was a period of time where I felt like the rock sound, rap sound was very limp biscuit, you know, very mm-hmm. like corn in a way. And I think they are finding ways to take the the styles of rock and music today that are relevant and mix it in and more inspirational, more, you know, more intense live shows. Like they still have elements where they have the mosh pits and all that, mm-hmm. but they're mixing it together with hip hop in a different sort of way. Okay. You know, then you have, you know, groups like, the Domino Effect, they're a duo, and I've always called them kind of like our little outcasts of St. Louis. They're very, very, very introspective with their lyrics. You know, they're very conscious, but at the same time, they are able to take some of this modern production in hip hop that we see and put it with their music and it creates this vibe. Plus they are very, they're very conceptual and I love that about them. Draco has been around for a minute, but I think out of the, the, the newer groups that are there, he's kind of been just really working the last few years to get put out there. Draco kind of gives me at times a very J Cole type vibe. You know what I mean? Like his, his last album therapy sessions, he's talking about his aspirations, his dreams and whatnot. But like I said, he's able to package this in a way that's really, really interactive for newer listeners and so on and so forth. Native Son, they're kind of like what Ilphonics is to St. Louis to Indianapolis. What do you mean by that? So they've been out for a long time. Mm -hmm. And Sleepy, who's the drummer, who I'm very cool with, he travels with bands all over the the nation playing as a drummer. Like he was recently in St. Louis at the Bistro with Nicole Henry. But in many ways, they're the type of group that's been around so much, they open a lot of doors for the younger acts. And they have a very unique sound too. So we've played on the circuit with them. And I mean, even though we sound different, they are very, very strong and mixing that jazz, um, hip-hop, but it, it, it kind of gives you that 90s hip-hop vibe at the same time. They, they mix it together really well. And then Loot Rat, who I can't speak highly enough, being from U-City, I feel like they are the true embodiment of what 
it was to grow up in U-City. You had a hip-hop element because U-City has birthed a lot of MCs and a lot of our hip-hop community here in St. Louis. But we also have that rich jazz tradition, right. as you already know. Right. And they meld that together really well. And they just keep it 100% hip-hop. So it's been really cool. We're speaking with Larry Mars. He's director of Artist Residency Program at the Kranzberg Arts Foundation, as well as the frontman of the hip-hop fusion band, Ilphonics. Why don't we hear something from uh, the greater good? Mm -hmm. Since they are, you said they're kind of similar. They've been around a long time, but they're they're also doing something a little bit different yeah, they are. Um, from you. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and take a quick listen to um, Santiago by the Greater Good here on St. Louis on the Air. I don't be serving on roads, so you gotta come to me. Spend too much time repeating myself, so you gotta come and see. Lord knows I'm gone, but I'll be good. So to pray for me, you've been waiting so long. Santiago by the Greater Good back from 2019. Why did you choose the venue uh, yeah. that you chose uh, in order to have this festival? Well, I mean, I mean, it's it's it's, it's kind of twofold. Okay. Due to COVID, we lost a lot of venues. Mm. Um, and that's been a rough scenario for a lot of bands because St. Louis is a unique spot right now because you either have a venue that can have just the right amount of people or it's just way too many folks. Like, I didn't want to put this somewhere super big because you don't want the room to be empty on your first festival. But at the same time, you know, the, the venues just didn't exist per se. And the second reason that I did it was because of Steve at Off-Broadway. And I think this is important. Often in St. Louis, a lot of the urban genres don't have places to land. Okay. Um, a lot of people have these misconceptions and notions about if I put hip hop in my venue, it's going to bring a certain crowd. And that's usually far from the truth, you know. And you can see it with the bigger venues often. You know, they'll bring in the, the major rap stars, but it's the security and all this other stuff that goes along with it. And so the reason that I bring that up is because with Steve in particular, Steve has been very intentional in making sure that he's trying to create spaces for all genres of music in our scene. And he's very much about putting not only his, his support behind it with the venue financially and showing up. And for me, that's very important because spaces like that matter in St. Louis all too often when things can be. Well, when we were coming out, certain people wouldn't give us a chance because they heard rap. That mm -hmm. was the first thing they heard was rap. Oh, well, I don't know if I want uh, Ilphonics in my venue, you know. Mm -hmm. And shout out to groups like the Midwest Avengers, who they're the, 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 the statesmen of live hip hop in St. Louis, if you ask me. They helped knock down those doors by letting venues and people who were booking shows know, like, hey, this ain't what that is, you know. Give these groups a chance. So Steve has showed up in the ways that I think a lot of people who talk about diversity, equity, <laughs> inclusion. Okay. He showed up in ways that a lot of them have not. And he's really there. You can call him. He's accessible. You can ask the questions. And he stood behind it. So I want to support venues like that. So do you actually see that in the rest of the shows that you do in and around St. Louis? Do you see the diversity, uh, I guess the ethnic diversity that you're looking for in the crowd of the people who show up to the places you do go? Yeah, I mean, it's gotten better over the years, you know. And I think certain places have gotten better. Steve down at Off-Broadway has been phenomenal. I know that over at the Kranzberg, they've been having a lot of different diverse festivals with JMO Productions at the Big Tent and whatnot. So I think it's getting better. But I think it's one of those things after coming out of a pandemic that shut everything down for almost two years, people need to be reminded that this is important. You mm -hmm. know, we have to have spaces for different artists. And I'm not even just talking about urban music. I'm talking about the LGBTQ community. I'm talking about so many different things because we saw what happened over in the Grove with everything that was going on. What What do you mean for the people who don't know what's going on? So basically over there, there was some some allegations about, you know, misconduct with people working in venues over in that space. OK. And, you know, the people on the music scene talk, you know, and what's really I think important for people to know is that there has to be a professionalism, there has to be an equity, and there has to be spaces for people to come in to feel safe, okay. you know. And if we're talking about creativity in St. Louis, everybody should be able to express themselves in different venues all over with no issue, you know. But for me, deeper than that, 
it's just very important that we allow different types of music to flourish in our city. You know, St. Louis can be very traditional. We're a blues city. We're a jazz city. You know, we're the home of Chuck Berry. And these things are important. Like, that's our history. Mm -hmm. But how do we make new history? How do we move our city forward? We have to be able to embrace younger artists who don't because we don't always have music infrastructure here in St. Louis. And that's why people leave. So we have to be able to embrace younger artists. Sometimes we take losses. I'm not doing this for money. I'm doing this because it creates it creates it like it creates a situation where people can be seen, you know, and build those things out. And you have to be intentional. And when you're intentional, you take losses sometimes, you know. Well, you're the director of artist residency program at the Kranzberg mm-hmm. Arts Foundation, so it's more you're more than just the the front person for mm-hmm. for the group. Uh, do you see that the role that you've taken with the Kranzberg Arts Foundation? in any way playing a reason into why you wanted to start this festival and to show off a certain kind of art that's gone on um, that's going on in the city. I think I was hired because I was always that way, okay. you know. Um, big ups to Chris Hansen, you know, and his support of this. They are they're not sponsoring this in any way, but he is a supporter of what I'm doing. I believe in our foundation, we definitely take the stance of making sure that we're creating spaces and access for everybody, you know. So I tend to align myself with people and things that believe in what I believe in. If I don't, if you don't believe in what I believe in when it comes to these things, I typically don't interact with you on that level. It's always cordial and professional. There's no like beefs or anything like that. But when it comes to doing business or work or creating, you know, show opportunities, these things are important to me, and I tend to work in places and be in spaces where that's understood. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So So how do you figure that this festival showing off these all Mm -hmm. these different acts is going to, uh, I don't know, broaden the palette or at least provide another opportunity for people to listen here in the St. Louis area? I think it broadens the palette because what we're doing is elder statesmen. We're saying we're going to take what we've created in the spaces that we would normally have for ourselves and allow new acts to come on and be introduced to the people that we've kind of built over the years, mm-hmm. you know. And I think that's important because if a band doesn't have to wait two or three years to get into a decent venue, that might encourage them to stay in St. Louis and keep playing, right? I don't want young baby bands or bands that are on the come up to feel burned out, feeling like I don't know the right people, so I can't get into these spaces. Like, you know, I don't know the booking agent. Well, you know what? You're a great band. I know the booking agent. Let's do a show, you know? Let me connect you with them and let me help you build your brand the same way that somebody helped us build our brand. That's important. What has kept you in St. Louis, though? You and your group in St. Louis? Because the truth of the matter is I travel enough to know that everything the media says about our city isn't always true. There's crime in every city I go to. You know, there's there's click clickishness in every city I go to. But the real thing about St. Louis is the potential is there. The the pieces are here. You know, the the, the infrastructure does the framework exists. We just got to fill in the holes, you know. And I believe in my city. And I don't say that blindly. I'm one of the first people that can sit down. I read the history. I read the books. I understand the problems we face as a city. But I've also noticed in every city that I've been to that really supports music or its culture, they lean in. And what I'm trying to get people in St. Louis to realize is that while you're willing to go to another spit city and spend seven, eight hundred dollars on nightlife, you have everything you need here to create the same scenario. You just have to lean in the same way. So I'm, I'm passionate about it and I do the work to make sure that we create that. The person that does the work to uh, make sure that all is getting heard in the hip hop area of music in St. Louis is Larry Mars. He's the director of artist residency program at the Kranzberg Arts Foundation. He's also the frontman of the hip hop fusion band Ilphonics, and he is in charge of starting the brand new Future Fest, which is coming up this Saturday from one until nine o'clock at Off Broadway. Larry, thank you very much for coming in with us today. Thank you for having me. Today's episode was produced by Avery Rogers with audio engineering and podcast design by Aaron Dorr. Our executive producer is Alex Hoyer. St. Louis on the Air is a production of St. Louis Public Radio. Understanding starts here. Do you find yourself regularly listening to episodes of St. Louis on the Air? Suggest us to a friend you think might enjoy our conversations. 
and leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts on the App Store. It's the simplest way to help people discover our show. Thanks. St. Louis Public Radio is a member-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.